And um, uh, a few years ago, I was working on a feature film. And uh, the assistant I was working with, um, occasionally he would um, capture the tapes with the wrong settings. And he sometimes accidentally set it to uh, 16 channels of audio. And so what I'd end up with is a quick time movie with one stereo track of audio and then 15 blank tracks. And you may not think that's a huge problem until you try to bring it into Final Cut Pro and edit it onto your timeline when it wants to insert 16 audio tracks and it wants to overwrite everything that's below it. And uh, that, was, that got very annoying. <laughs> and uh, I really wish I'd had Qt Edit um, at that point in time because Qt Edit makes that sort of thing very, very easy to solve. So let's see. Okay, let me make this a bit wider. So as you can see, um, I've got one audio track that's three minutes, uh, 14 seconds, same as the video, and all of the others are zero. All of the others are completely blank. So um, I could go through and deselect all of these to disable the tracks, or I could click the minus button to remove the tracks, but it's much, much easier to just use one of the uh, built-in quick tasks. Uh, and there's one for removing empty tracks, so I can just click perform task. And as you can see, all of the empty tracks have disappeared and it's left me with the tracks that actually have data in them. And um, there are uh, several other quick tasks available. You can automatically remove gamma correction. Um, you can create a time code track from the date and time that the movie was created. And that can be very useful um, if you originally had time of day time code set and for some reason uh, the time code track has disappeared or, or been corrupt. So you can use that to restore that time code. Um, you can also create a time code track from a THM file. And um, if you're shooting on a DSLR such as the Canon 5D, it doesn't include time code data within the QuickTime movie. And um, all of that data is stored in a separate file called a THM file in the same folder. So what you could do is um, you could bring in the uh, movie clip into Qt Edit and then bring in the THM file to restore all the extra data. So that's very useful. Um, you can also, oh, uh, you can also um, add uh, tracks manually. You can add um, time code tracks, for instance, um, whole range of settings, um, drop frame, negative time code, you can change the start value, you can add a real name, and all of that is very, very useful, and in fact, essential, um, if you're planning to do an uh, online or um, you're planning to media manage the project within Final Cut Pro. And um, you can also um, add um, and edit and remove uh, chapters. And, but what's even more uh, useful is that you can import and export chapters. So I can import chapters from uh, other QuickTime movies, Final Cut Pro marker lists, Avid locator lists, DVD Studio Pro chapter lists. It's a whole range of options there. But um, I'm going to import a marker list uh, created by Cut Notes. So as you can see, um, it's imported all of the markers and uh, changed it um, uh, so that it's now zero-based because that's, that's how chapters have to be within QuickTime files. Um, and you can export that uh, to uh, various marker lists as well and send it directly, uh, bring it directly into a Final Cut Pro project through a uh, project overview. Um, you can also um, view and edit um, all sorts of metadata and um, uh, it can be very useful in seeing uh, which applications originally created the file, um, which applications have modified it, um, extra data such as uh, real name, uh, UUID in Final Cut Studio, and you can even add your own custom metadata fields if you want to tag it with extra information. But, um, oh, and that um, you can import metadata from other QuickTime movies, and uh, you can import and export uh, to text files and CSV files. So you could export to a CSV file and bring all of this um, metadata into a spreadsheet, if you wished. Um, but I, probably the number one feature people use in Qt Edit is, um, are, are the encoding attributes. 
And uh, all these R are special flags that tell um, QuickTime Player and other QuickTime applications how the file was encoded and um, what it's supposed to look like on screen. And some applications don't set this data correctly. So you may have run into an issue um, where you're creating a progressive movie and you bring it into a QuickTime Player and for some reason QuickTime Player is saying it's interlaced. Well, that's normally um, a problem where the flag hasn't been set correctly. So um, you can change it here. You can toggle between progressive and interlaced and make sure the flag is set correctly. And I should uh, clarify at this point that um, anything you adjust here in this tab, it doesn't actually affect the uh, data within the movie. It, it makes absolutely no changes to the pixels. So if you select progressive, it won't deinterlace. But, um, but what it will do is um, it will, if it is progressive underneath, it will make sure that flag is set correctly. And it will make sure it will display properly in QuickTime Player and other Final Cut Studio app and other uh, QuickTime applications such as Final Cut Studio. Um, but I think the most common function that people want to change is the, uh, the gamma and color information. So um, I don't know how well you can see this on the screen, but um, you can modify the gamma and see all of the changes in real time. And so you can see it a bit better. I'll do something a bit more drastic. And so people um, adjust this at, um, to get um, an idea of what it's going to look like um, uh, when it's displayed, uh, when it's viewed on the web, or if it's displayed in QuickTime Player, and uh, to remove any gamma shifts they may be getting. Okay, and that's just a small subset of the features in Pro Media Tools. Um, we've also got Auto Transfer, which is for um, automatically um, offloading from camera memory cards, and uh, it'll automatically uh, verify the copied data, which is very useful because um, you know those uh, compact flash cards can be very expensive, and people want to reuse them, and so. I really like to have the peace of mind of knowing that everything's been transferred correctly and there are no errors before I erase it. Because um, the scary part is that um, if, you're, if you have a bad card or a bad card reader, the finder doesn't necessarily display an error. And so you could, you could copy the data and there's no guarantee that um, it would say anything about it, that it, that it would complain at all. And you would only know that there was something wrong when you try to open the files and you find out they're corrupt. But by then, you've already erased the card. And so I think uh, verification is essential when dealing with um, uh, tapeless media. Uh, we also have uh, Edit Detector, which um, scans um, your edited movie clips and uh, it can break them up into individual shots. And there's a range of uh, export options available, such as um, Final Cut Pro markers, uh, EDLs, Avid locators. Um, you can um, export each individual. In sorry, you can export each individual shot as a QuickTime movie, either self-contained or reference. Uh, there's a whole range of options there. Um, another one that's very useful is a Render Watcher. And what this does is it notifies you when uh, your renders or compressor batch is complete. And um, there's a whole range of options for notifying you. Um, it can send you a growl notification, which can also be sent to your iPhone as well. Um, it can play a sound. It can uh, send you an email. It can send a text message. It can open the file in QuickTime Player. It can send it to another application. There's a whole range of options there. And uh, I still, I haven't shown even half of the stuff available, so um, I recommend uh, downloading the 15-day trial from www.digitalrebellion.com.